<laughs> what is going on good people of the internet it is time it is time after two preview episodes we're talking about a little bit of this and a little bit of that we are finally here for the premiere episode of blurred grounds almost said panel to panel but that's saturday that's the other show that me and travis do but we are here now for this the show that has been building up to that i have been like so excited for oh i'm so glad it's here blurred grounds the show where african-american nerds come together and talk about what we care about whether it be comic books video games anime anything that we care about and want to sh- like spread light on we are here talking about it right now my name is James Portis. I am the editor-in-chief of On Comics Ground. I am here with some of my staff, uh, my amazing editor, Jasmine. How are you doing tonight? I am here, and I feel ready to go. That's what's up. That's what's up. And then we have uh, like some, some of my senior staff writers here that have been pulling weight for a good long time. First up is the man who has just completed his doctorate. Like has been doing, putting in work, re- like like sort of coming off like the like, the, like the, the, the token, like as as some people have, have pointed out. But no, no, he is the one that is putting the work and caring about the state of Wakanda. Doctor Aaron Jones, how are you doing this this evening? Doing well, doing well. Very excited for this first episode. Very excited. That's what's up. That's what's up. And then the man who went to Disney World and didn't tell me. <laughs> How dare you? Marcus Freeman, what is up? Um, I'm sunburned and tired, but I'm ready to rock. Let's do this. You're sunburned? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm very pale. Ooh. Oof. See, yeah. do, you, do you peel? Because I peel and I hate it. I do peel. It sucks. It really I've never suck. been sunburned in my life. Uh, Yo. it's not it's not a fun experience it's not a fun oh my god is it, does everyone here does everyone here burn <laughs> no not i come not to the I, desert I, okay, we all okay, burn okay, here okay, okay. I, was say, I was just we, i lack in the melanin so it kind of oh sucks <laughs> I'm, I'm, i mean i'm also filipino so i guess that's also that yeah. lends to it Anyway, sorry. It's cool. Don't mean to interrupt. Okay, go ahead. It's cool. And, go ahead. and then we have the welder man himself, the man with the fro, Travis Tucker. How you doing? Uh, pretty well. I got to stay inside today, and it was only 107. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. See, that's what happens when you live in yeah. California. You try to kill yourself out in that heat. It was 117 the other day, man. I was dying. Oh, oh that sounds Good horrible. Lord. What I part of California are you in? Hell? Like, <laughs> like what? Right. Hell, hell I mean, needles, so yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> God. Yeah, pretty much. That, that's horrible. But, uh, like, we are going to go ahead and dive into it. But before we do, please make sure to follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Blurred Grounds. Thankfully, no one saw that name. It's very original. I'm very happy about that. Shout out to my man. Uh, Ronald Simmons over at edonreadcomics.com for helping me come up with it. He is amazing. Uh, please go support his content. Go support our content at oncomicsground.com. Hyphens between those words. But on Twitter and Instagram, we are just at oncomicsground. So where we are posting uh, amazing opinion pieces and reviews every week weekday for you guys to care about the comic books and nerd culture. So... Let's go ahead and dive into it. So, if, if, like, if you didn't catch the preview episodes, we had episode one, which was talking about the big precipice of what a lot of newer casual black nerds got into the scene with, which was Black Panther, the MCU movie that is Oscar nominated and was killing it the past year and a half after his uh, T'Challa's amazing first appearance in uh, Captain America Civil War. He was able to get his own movie, and it blew up. And we talked about that in our first episode, talked about some of the major themes, some of the characters and whatnot. I had my beef explained about how I feel about Killmonger, and I, and I, and I, and I defended myself. But you know what? We, we were there, and we, we, we survived. And then episode two was me and Travis sitting down talking about some of the newer legacy heroes and how they have struggled to, like, get their footing and like how they struggle as a concept so like, please go check those out on our youtube channel at youtube.com slash on comics ground they were really fun to do i'm i was i enjoyed it the hell out of it and i'm really excited for tonight so the topic for tonight we're going to stay in the realm of comic books because what we're good at we, we one of our main focuses as a comic book review website and it's how 
black characters have struggled to have their own solo titles for as long as they've existed. And you go back to the most early like representation of African Americans in comic books. And it's appalling. Because if you do a little research, we start off with two characters that were just caricatures when they existed. You had Ebony White, who, like, if you Google him, he is this big-lipped, cartoonish-looking character who, if you've ever heard of the spirit, I believe Robert Rodriguez uh, did the movie. I forget who. It was either mm-hmm. Robert, someone did the movie. Um and like, like that was the, it was based off of of comic book. Oh, was it Zack Snyder? Was it Zack Snyder? No, I think I think Frank Miller actually directed it. Did I think he they really? let him direct that movie? Yeah, yeah, I think the Spirit was a Frank Miller movie. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, because he wanted he wanted to direct it in like in memory of of, of Will Eisner. Yep, he was the director. And okay, it. It, it wasn't the best movie, but based on like this, this legendary comic book by Will Eisner, and. What didn't have the most legendary of characters in Ebony White? He was this jive talking caricature of a black man, and it was very unsightly for a lot of people. And growing up, like seeing that for so many like African Americans, that's the only representation you had in a comic book was probably very insulting. Like just looking at him, I'm just like, what are you? <laughs> Terrifying. It really is. And then you go on. To the other one we like, like that existed back then, and he literally his nickname was Whitewash. That's how Ugh. sad his name like it was. His name like his name was Washington, but the, like, the the members of the Young Allies, who for those who don't know, the Young Allies was an offshoot of the Captain America book. It basically was like a group of young kids who partnered with Bucky to go like solve mysteries and crimes and stuff during World War Two, and. One of the kids or one of the characters was this black guy with really big pink lips and would like like have really weird speech patterns like to simulate black culture was named Whitewash and he like hung out with them and whatnot and it just it was very disturbing to say the least. I think even I think even worse than just being this caricature just visually, I think also story wise, what what I've seen and what I've read is that pretty much a prop and uh was perpetually in danger mm-hmm. um so there, there's there's this book uh called really great book about um black folks in comics called blacker than ink um and i remember uh it said like that basically his superpower was to speak jive and to be captured and tied to explosive devices uh and so like it, it, it it's it's bad enough that <laughs> it's a it's a caricature but it's even worse that that's that's this purpose that this character served was to be rescued and to be almost blown up. So yeah, yeah, yeah. not good at all. <laughs> yeah, it, it was really like like not in good taste. But then that all changed in 1966, as we referenced in our preview episode, because Stan Lee took it upon himself in an issue of Fantastic Four to create the first premier black superhero, which was indeed T'Challa, King of Wakanda, the Black Panther. And from there... it The it, Black it, Panther. <laughs> <laughs> from there, it wasn't like this giant boom of like black character, black character, black character. Because like even when as T'Challa was created, it was sparked by controversy. Not only... like, like He literally was called the Black Panther during the civil rights movement. Like, that is the most like damning thing that Stan Lee as a white Jewish man could do, but he did it solely because he was tired of bigotry and tired of hatred and wanted to inspire. And the most ironic part was he didn't name it after the black Panther movement. He just was a coincidence. And when Marvel wanted him to change it, they tried it and it didn't work. So they just went back to being called the black Panther. Try to call him the black leopard or something. Yeah. And trash. <laughs> it doesn't have the same ring to it, and it just it didn't Not at all. ring with the character as a whole. So like you like you have that, and T'Challa goes on. He gets his own solo comic. Things keep going, and from there you have 
Robbie Robertson, who's already made his like appearance in the the, the Raimi Spider Man movies, was at, like like you start seeing more decent human black characters in comic books, and like yes, they're side characters, but at least they exist in books as real people. You have Robbie Robertson and Hobie Brown, the Prowler, because before Miles Morales' uncle became the Prowler, there was another African American who was the Prowler, which a lot of people don't like, don't really know, but. Even then, seeing characters in books was probably really inspiring for kids of that generation. And then, dear to my heart, the, the, the man, the myth, the legend, a Sam Wilson, a.k.a. the Falcon, was created in 1969. And, yeah, he was a side character in the Captain America books, but he, he grew and kept going and flew higher and higher until he became Captain America by the hands of Rick Remender. And it, ugh. It's so good. I I have a question. Yes. Is it true that Sam Wilson was a pimp before he like met Steve <laughs> Rogers? Okay, like a, what? Okay, so like there is this thing that um there the, the, there was this thing where the Red Skull tried to implant that thought and that like mindset into him that that was his true origin similarly how the cosmic cube did the same thing to steve and made him nazi steve and everyone hated it and that was this thing for a long time until literally sam beat the crap out of the red skull to find the truth but no sam grew up in harlem his dad was a preacher until he was gunned down and he had to raise his brother and sisters like like that's what like that's what sam's story is so like it's like it, it's definitely a misconception like half the time but it is a real plot line of how sam had to get his real origin back so that is a thing okay yeah i was about to jump in like i uh i was on mute but i like so y'all didn't hear me say a pimp like i, you know, I just had, a, <laughs> I just had an exclamation that <laughs> y'all missed because i was trying to keep out background noise but yeah that's Oh, that is great. Yikes. I, I, I didn't even know that part, so. Yeah, yeah. like, I had read that because I was, like, really deep into it, and I was, like, trying to read Falcon and support that book because it shouldn't have been canceled, damn it. And, like, I was reading everything, and I saw that, and I was like, why? What? Who thought that was a good idea? Uh, I don't know. I, it, I, I forget if it even was a retcon, but, like, somebody fixed it and restored his real origin, and I was like, yeah. Yeah, and somebody it's like, looked back and said, that, that's not cool. That's not cool. And it's and it's like that's a that's a part of even the even the black characters that we really enjoy and like like they, you know there there are these elements that like are not as great uh, or yeah. you know they're kind of they're kind of stereotypical and we still kind of maintain love for them because you know because of writers kind of doing the right thing uh, and kind of not you know harping on the um, stereotypical aspects you know like cyborgs an athlete and you know like um uh luke cage was a criminal and like like all these kind of like little things that are in the background like the origin of of characters black characters that is kind of just like uh that kind of sucks but you know we don't have very many so we gotta yeah. you know um uh, so like at what point uh it, it's difficult to find that point where you can be like you're critical and you're like you know, asking these questions and kind of digging deep and, you know, making sure that the characters that are represent representing us are have some positive uh, positivity or like some reality to them. But at the same time, like you don't want to, you know, attack our only representations. Then we have no representation. And, exactly. And then, uh, then where where are we? Well, that leads into, into, into a discussion we're going to have later because, like, you see the characters of all. And what's nice is Falcon was the first black character that didn't just have black in his name because not even a year later yeah. you have Jack Kirby create the Black Racer who was, like, like, like literally, like, the, the dark side fourth world version of the Grim Reaper. And it was a black right. man on skis. <laughs> I kid you not. It's a black yes. man with skis. Yes. Like like he's like he's gonna, he's gonna snow like he's gonna go on the slopes in space, and like it was. It was that, that, I like, like Black Racer. He's definitely a cool character. He got more of a redesign in the future, but like at first you're just like, bro, bro, the, brother, why are you on skis? Like it, 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 it's, 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 of all things to put a black man on, you know, why skis? Just like, what? Bro, I've never skied a day in my life. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, yeah. but, but like mm. at least you could see Jack Kirby, who like was very famous for trying to create more diversity in comic books, create that character. So like, yay, Jack Kirby, I guess. But like, and but then you go on, and within like within the span of two years, you get two of the greatest characters to ever be created for black culture, which was John Stewart and ah! Luke Cage. I love John Stewart. <laughs> yeah, he's a legend. He's a legend. Always, always, always. Oh, yeah. Like yeah, both of these, man. like like in one thing that I've always loved is that first like like issue of Luke Cage Power Man is the most symbolic thing of a black man breaking out of chains, and not a lot of people focus on that. Mm. Like just that first image, you see that, and granted, his first issue was written by white people. So you see that and you're just, you, 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 you gain an appreciation for his creators. You gain an appreciation for Stan Lee for wanting to actually promote these characters and create diversity in what's going on. And to see that kind of imagery is just breathtaking. And I just, I love it. Sorry. I'm like, okay, I'm, just, I'm, I'm, I'm an uh, no, right it's now. good. Geek <laughs> out. It's good. That's what costume? we're here for. Can we talk <laughs> about that costume? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I, I, I mean, as they said the TV show, he did look like a damn fool. But at the same time, like the, I have a lot of respect for the tiara and the open yellow shirt. Like not, not t- everyone does. I, I like it. The, the TV show handled that perfectly. Like that, that, that was amazing. I they paid like, homage to it and they kind of poked fun of it at the same time. I like that. You're def- there's a uh, there's a chapter of the book that I that I mentioned earlier uh, that's literally called uh, Bare Chess. Silver tiaras and removable afros. Oh my yes. God. <laughs> <laughs> like, literally, well, no. What's even What's even better is later on you have a character like Black Lightning who had a removable afro. That's the funniest part. He, like his entire gimmick was he would just take the mask off and take the afro off and then go back to like his normal day. <laughs> Never forget that Luke Cage Hilarious. traveled all the way to Latvia area because. Doctor Doom owed him like a minuscule amount of money. It's only like, two hundred dollars. Like, oh, that's, yeah. that's one thing that pissed me. I want to do. I'll do a Luke Cage spotlight episode. But that that was literally something that pissed me off of like that first episode of Luke Cage where he goes, "I'm not for hire, ma'am." I'm like, brother, you are the hero for hire. Your first <laughs> issue said you are the hero for hire. What are you literally talking you're the about? Hero for hire. <laughs> Oh, what's, what's, what's even crazier about Luke Cage is in like the next year you had the creator of Black Lightning, um, Tony Isabella, create not only Lawrence, Lawrence Fishburne's character in Ant Man the Wasp, Black Goliath, and you had like and, and he also created Misty Knight right before he goes to DC and creates Black Lightning. So R.I.P. Black Goliath. <sighs> See, they keep hinting at him coming back. Like, apparently someone else just took over the mantle of Goliath. And uh, we might have to talk about his death one day. Yeah, I believe it's his nephew. There's a pretty interesting miniseries out of, spinning out of War Realms called uh, Giant Man. It was pretty entertaining. I might have and I believe that. his nephew. Only thing I didn't like is that the other giant man can grow bigger than him. He can't grow as big as them. Oh, that's stupid. <laughs> right. Right. And I, feel like an under- I didn't read <laughs> that. Under- I'm bad. I feel now. like there's an underlying message towards that, Come but on, I really son. don't want to dig into that right now. <laughs> like, you, we'll have to talk about that later. But yeah. like um that, that but it's a it's me. a good read. It's a good read though. Oh, I'm about to go read that later. Damn it. Um, but like like even from there, you went like within like next happens is Black Lightning and then like and Black Lightning will definitely be getting like his own showcase, especially with this fall, the T V show coming back. We'll definitely be doing more about him. But and then like between the years of uh, 1975 and 1980, you have Black Lightning that's created Bumblebee and Mal Duncan, who's gone by the Guardian and as Harold, who, like who who joined the Teen Titans. You had Marv Wolfman create Cyborg in 1980, right before he relaunched the Teen Titans. And all these characters are great; they're 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 they're, they're going forth, but no, not all of them had solo titles, and even then. Their solo titles didn't last long. Like, Black Lightning didn't last that long. Luke Cage kept getting, like, canceled then would get rebooted later. And then Power Man and Iron Fist would come out. And, like, his his publication career is a mess. Black Panther's publication career is a hot mess. Oh, my God. And it's... <laughs> you, you keep going on, and it's just, it's frustrating. 
And we move on into the modern era of comics where Milestone comes into being. And, oh. Uh, what is that, Aaron? Oh, I just, I just, you know, gasped. In, you know. <laughs> so for those who don't know. In, uh, in, in quiet longing. Uh, <laughs> Milestone will probably get multiple episodes because Milestone Media is this, like, juggernaut when it comes to black culture in comic books that is just there. And you want it to be more, but because of legal issues, it can't be more right now. And you're just like, oh, come back. Just come back, please. And it's it's so frustrating. Do the legal issues, is that what's preventing Static from appearing on Black Lightning? So I know they were talking about see, doing that. I see, I, I, Okay, I no. Well, well, let's have a frank conversation. <laughs> I was trying to move forward, but you know, let's have a frank conversation. <laughs> what, what, explain bad. to My me, bad. Marcus, explain to me, <laughs> why do you want St- a Virgil Hawkins, a character that other than a joke, other than a joke like in, like create like in in a Justice League issue where someone thought Jefferson was Black Lightning's dad and Jefferson told them to fuck off. Where where have you ever like seen those two in the same place besides one episode in passing of Young Justice? Explain to me. I mean, I just want to see more black heroes in a black setting. So and that's great. More than Mary here to me. <laughs> Most definitely. The history. I, I, I'm not. I'm not aware of the history. I understand that uh, Static is not even technically from the the same universe as Black as uh, Black Lightning, but I mean, I feel like the the writing team on that show is strong enough to where they can make it work. I I, I agree, but at the same time, I'm... James wants you to be faithful to the history. Well, no, it's no, just, I, like, I, I, well, no, it's I not that. that. It's not that. It will partially that. It's just, I, <laughs> yes. it's always that, yes. but it's always but that. There's also but other at things. the same time, you have Virgil who's always been separately and has his own stakes and has his own things. And to the point that like the only people he's ever been associated with are the teen Titans and milestone characters. And you have Jefferson who can't get a run of his own series to save his own life that now because he doesn't have enough content in his solo series like the couple that he's had, they're having to pull from outsider's lore to keep his show going. Like, they Man. need to remain separately and grow on their own. They don't need to like be attached to the hip because they both have electric powers. <laughs> I feel that. I feel that. Which like I'm not even like like I'm like I'm not trying to like discount like your, your feelings because like that will be something we talk about on, on like on a milestone episode or a static like thing where st- static shock is this cultural milestone <laughs> milestone but up uh, like <laughs> uh, <laughs> where like him and John Stewart ironically voiced by the same uh, person Phil Lamar like actually like. Let's... National treasure. Oh my yes. god! Goat. I didn't the know goat. that. Oh my god! You, can you not? Wait, you, you didn't know that? Did you not, did wait, you know wait, that? wait, 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 wait. Wait, you just blew my whole mind. Wait, 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 what? Oh, yeah. Phil Lamar. Oh, is a, is Phil Lamar not only treasure. voices St- Samurai Jack. He voices oh John yes. Stewart, and he voices um like uh a Static, and he voices um the the, the one the one black dude on Futurama. So that'll blow your mind too. My man, <laughs> my man, dude, Hermes. You can hop on Cameo right now and get a shout out from him for fifty dollars. Like you can get that any is... voice you want. <laughs> like all these voice uh, actors are on Cameo just, now. It's the funniest. I thing. literally just watched him on Critical Role, so I'm sitting here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm nerding out. It's fine. It's fine. Keep going. He's the goat. <laughs> but no, it's just like st- static. Like static and John Stewart, like are like have fed like black culture in such a major way for the small time that were there. That when Scott Snyder was going to relaunch the Justice League, like what a year and a half ago, almost two years now. And like, he asked the community, "What like team of the Justice League do you want me to have?" And they all said the Justice League Unlimited team. And John Stewart came on board, and it was like, yes, God, I need that was this. my introduction. That was my intro to, to to superheroes in general, but also like to the comics and and everything. That was that was it right there. Oh God, same. Oh God, that's hitting my nostalgia button. It's fun. <laughs> 
And I hear that book is awesome, and I feel like I'm missing out for not reading. Dude, like, yeah. Justice League is the only thing keeping, like, the, the whole DC <laughs> universe together right now. Like, Dan DiDio is just tearing everything up and getting rid of every sidekick that he sees and shooting Dick Grayson in the head and all this bullshit. And then Scott Snyder... That and was Jay King. Scott... Well, well, I, no, but he was a hitman. He was a hitman for Dan DiDio. But no, like... And then you have Scott Snyder and James Tyne in the fourth and Joshua Williamson who are all like writing the side books for um the the new Justice Initiative and they're all like trying to hold the universe together like by their bare hands and then the trying to push them out. It's like no, let them be. <laughs> but no, like you go from that. And you... Yes, yeah, 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 like King, like King wrote it, but. But the, 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 uh, he was a hitman for for Didio, and uh, I will explain why on panel to panel. But there's not the time for this. <laughs> <laughs> we will talk about it on on, on, on a Saturday, Mary. We will talk yeah, about that because Mary's in the chat. He's fighting words, James. Yeah, Mary's getting on you too. He's fighting words, no, James. No, because Mary agrees with me. But I don't know why she's fighting with me. But no, um, and we and we and we go like like it's the modern era. We have milestone. We have um like both shows of Justice League Unlimited and. Um, Static Shock, we have Jason Roosh because uh, for anybody who watches uh, the, the Flash TV show, Jason, the other black kid who, who was uh, next to Firestorm, not Jax, whoever the frick Jax is, like, I don't know oh who the gosh. fuck that is. The he second did, Jefferson? He didn't even, he, he, he didn't even, he wasn't even created until the TV show. Um, J- Jason Roosh was supposed to be the one who became Firestorm because he became Firestorm in the Injustice 2 video game. And, and I bet all the casuals were like, where's Jax? Jax doesn't exist. <laughs> like, uh, and no, Barry, you're not going to get yelled at on, on Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> what the heck? But no. It, and, and it's just, like, you go into it and... There's this whole new landscape where all these new characters can be created. You have Dwayne McDuffie, God rest his soul, before he passed, who brought milestone characters into the main DC landscape where you had the Shadow Cabinet, you had Icon and Static and Hardware all in the main DC Universe canon. And then the New 52 happens, and the only people that are in the DC Universe are <sighs> Hardware and Static, and we don't see anybody ever again. <laughs> and it's depressing. <laughs> DC and like Cyborg, does, Cyborg was promoted but like demoted at the same time. That's episode three. <laughs> <laughs> we will talk about Cyborg. Cyborg gets his own episode because I want to defend that man. There, there's so much about Cyborg. Like, there's so much. We we are we are going to have a <laughs> candid discussion about him in two weeks. <laughs> and and then you have Black Panther that has this iconic run in the 1990s by Christopher Priest, one of the, the writers at Milestone for a long time. And you go into it and it just, it builds the foundation for what we talked about in the pre- the, the, pre- the preview episode of a lot of the things that are in the Black Panther movie. You have Killmonger, you have Nakia, who's so much different in the comics. <laughs> we had that discussion. That was a fun time. I blew everyone's minds with that one. <laughs> and then um, you have... Um, um, Reg- Reginald Hudlin, who wrote the next run of Black Panther, who created the iconic couple of Storm and Black Panther that everyone loves. Which I don't know. I, don't, I still don't know how I feel about that. I don't know how I feel about that. Honestly, I, I, I feel I, like. Go, go ahead, ahead, Jasmine. No, no, no. Go ahead. I I was just going to say I feel like there's two distinct camps regarding that. There's the camp. That, that thinks like, you know, T'Challa and Aurora being married is awesome. And then there's like, they can't, that things will, no, you know, Storm should be with Forge. That's how it should go. And we need to just yeah. let her stand on and, her and, own. And then there was the one time where Black Panther told her not to fuck Wolverine and then she wouldn't fuck Wolverine anyway. <laughs> <laughs> that is the most <laughs> awkward comic in the history of the world because like, it's after they get divorced after AVX and Storm comes back to the X mansion and calls T'Challa because they're having like a normal discussion because they're friends now again. And, and T'Challa just goes, Aurora, I don't care who it is. I don't care who you who you get with, but not him. And then she just goes, 
bye and, and like and, and while they're banging he cuts her hair back into the mohawk for her and i'm just like oh god <sighs> wolverine's such a homewrecker <laughs> he really is he is. yo he's home, raising man. children to oh, to get no. with them and, and all that you like are so we don't have to talk about wolverine <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm team cyclops uh, uh, yeah, Cyclops, Cyclops is right. Is, Cyclops is right. But like, well, Cyclops became the baddest motherfucker in the room in the first issue of House of X, where he ma- basically Amen. like made himself an honorary <laughs> black person. Where he goes, did right, you re- right. did you really think we were gonna just uh, like stand there and take this forever? I'm like, okay, honorary black man, you go do your right. thing. Like, okay, You're like the Malcolm X of mutants. <laughs> <laughs> Move over, Magneto. <laughs> Barry said, "Boo, Cyclops, boo." <laughs> <laughs> but no, and like so, so the, like after all that that history, I just like threw at you got your guys' heads, both in the audience and here on the, on the on the panel. You look at the current landscape of comic books, where I checked October solicitations for both DC and Marvel, and for Marvel, you have four team books that that, fe- that feature black characters. You have Avengers that has Blade and Black Panther on them. I don't know for how much longer since Blade's getting his own team book. Um, you have the Marauders, which is going to be after House of X and Powers of X, which will have Storm and Bishop on it. Which isn't it kind of funny that they put the two black characters on the team <laughs> on, on, on the one team that is also on a boat. <laughs> Isn't that kind of awkward? No. Am I I the only one that caught that? I think I was. But um, but no. And then you have Spider-Verse, which honorary team book because Miles is in it. And you have Strike Force, which not only has Blade as the leader, but you have Monica Rambeau, the baddest bitch in all of Marvel. Where, (laughs) and I, I defend that, damn it. Even before, even though she got depowered recently, I still defend that she's the baddest bitch in Marvel. But um, you, like like you, you you look at that. There's only four bo- four team books that have that feature black characters, and you have three count them three uh, solo titles for black characters, which is Black Panther that has been deemed never to be canceled ever again because <laughs> of it now being one of the highest grossing movies ever and being Oscar nominated. It will never be canceled now, and it's in the same camp as like Batman and Superman now. And you have Miles Morales, who, because of Spider Verse, is on that list as well. And you have Riri, yeah. who's just kind of sliding by. No one's bothering her, but for how much longer we don't know. Because now that Bendis is gone, her original creator, you have Eve Ewing just coasting, writing some good books, and no one's bothering her. So. You have- I just saw a, a preview a preview page, and apparently she's going to Wakanda. Yeah, because yeah, apparently the they're going to try to make her and Shuri like BFFs, and I'm like, I don't know how I feel about that. Oh, that's a whole nother. <laughs> well, no, because we had that discussion on the preview episode, episode where like like we, we both oh, both yeah. of us were like having the issue of like them trying to de-age Shuri, even though she's been through all this stuff, just because she's younger in the movies, and it's just. I don't know. I, I, like, I'm torn on it, but, like, if, if it gets more, like, like amazing black women into the comics, I guess I can let it go. I guess I can give it the pass, if that makes sense. Uh, yes. I mean, like, am I wrong? No, it's it's a little, because I know we talked about this in the, uh, in the earlier episode, too, about how they, in the Shuri book, they tried to merge her history as being Black Panther with her, the, the the what's been set for the movies, and it doesn't fit equally because they're making her young. So mm-hmm. I get where you're coming from, and but I also like for with the upcoming issue in Ironheart, I think they're gonna try and play them more adversarial than just they're gonna be buddy buddy. Like it's kind of a culture shock for Riri to go out there. That would be so, kind of good for her. Yeah, yeah, that's that's what it seems like. So I think it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting. <clears throat> Eve Ewing tweeted uh, like uh, uh, a YouTube of that part in uh, Black Panther where they come to Wakanda and then says, okay, part one. And then uh, uh, the second tweet is like Riri fl- flying into Wakanda and like, all right, now play it at this <laughs> right as you read this panel. <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> um, because it's like this like amazing, like, you know, that feeling of like, 
it never gets old, you know, like that happiness that you get when you're you know, surrounded by all this black black yeah. excellence. You yeah. probably makes the me. most she probably writes the most authentic black dialogue I've read in a comic book. I, I definitely feel that. Like not since like like someone like David F. Walker or like Christopher Priest have like I felt that much power behind someone's words. Because as even though Bendis is co writing it with um David F. Walker, you see in the one, count it, one solo black character book at DC Comics right now, Naomi, it definitely feels more like the black voice is prominent than it does Bendis. Right, right, right. I just, I don't understand how that's not a bigger issue. What's not a bigger issue? The fact that there's, there's only one black book at DC? Right, that there's only one book. Well, here's the thing, and I, and, I, and, I, and I looked through the solicitations, and it blew my mind. You, the, the, the contrast that DC has, where they have eight different books that have black characters on them, because like, Legion of Superheroes starts in, the, in, this, in September, and it has the new race change of um, Lightning Lad as black, and a couple other random black, black Legionnaires mixed into the lineup. So that counts. You have... Batman and the Outsiders that has Black Lightning in the signal. Uh, mm-hmm. Just Justice League that has Jon Stewart and Cyborg. Just League Odyssey that has Cyborg. Uh, technically, Shazam counts because Darla's on, on, in the book. So, like, she counts because she can turn into a superhero. So, I, I will give it a pass. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. then the Terrifics, Teen Titans, and Young Justice each have one. Because Mr. Terrific leaves the Terrifics. Teen Titans has Wallace West, and he will be forever deemed no, Wallace. No, 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 no. <laughs> he will not be called Wally. His name is Wallace. Uh, they are different characters. Thank you, Jeff Johns, for clarifying because race that that, that race change was bad, and we will talk about uh, we, we will talk about that on another episode. We have like all these episodes listed. That is, it's that so is an entire episode. Yes, uh, and and then you have the groan. The groan. Is the so, groan. Is so, because it's gonna be this As hard a former topic reviewer to talk of about. Flash, I was just like, uh, "No, I know." I when I was reviewing Flash, I was just like, "What is this? <laughs> What's it? It's, it, it, it's like Ben Stiller in the one movie. <laughs> what is this?" <laughs> <laughs> but no, and then you have Young Justice uh. that has the new Teen Lantern, and it's like, "Okay, Ooh. I saw that." Like and like she hacked. She apparently hacked a Green Lantern core battery so she could become a superhero. And I'm like, okay. That's sort of oh. like Riri 2.0, but okay. I'll let her give it a pro. She's, a, she's, Af- she's Afro-Latina. Yeah, she is. Huh. Mm-hmm. So, like, she, she does that. So, then you, like, so that, that contrast of, like, eight different books, technically seven, but I'm, I'm giving Shazam a pass, um, eight different books that have black, black heroes on them, and then you have one solo title, Naomi. And Naomi is only getting as much attention as she has gotten because speculators, the comic speculator boom that's been going on of her book just selling out every issue like clockwork. It's going to like third and fourth printings because for whatever reasons, people are just eating her up because of this mystery behind her origin. And it's just amazing. But at the same time, you look at this landscape and there's just this lack of solo titles for comic book characters of color and and i I, there's multiple different at like problems with it the main one that it needs to be discussed is the issue of capitalism where the whole supply and demand thing of comic books where if it's not selling a publisher isn't going to keep it on a shelf which sucks and i also feel like it depends on like their definition of not selling or in comparison to other things. Well, if I go over to Comicron.com right now, and we look at because um, we actually got this month's sales, we can, but they are embargoed till tomorrow. So I have to go to last month's, which was June, and you look at say, let's just control F Black Panther, and Black Panther. Is, num- is number 97 on the list with only 21,000 issues sold, but because of the movie, it's being able to skate by. 
that's not good numbers because if it goes any lower, normally it would be in cancellation range. And you have books that are in the upper 20s and 50s that are at least coasting around like 40,000 issues. Now, granted, the, the industry isn't what it used to be. Back in the 80s and 90s, you had books that were selling over millions of copies. The top, the top, the number one book of the month only sold 255,000. So it isn't the worst thing in the world, but when the upper hun the, the upper like hundreds are like like dominated by white characters, then you look at Black Panther and it's not really doing that well. It's very concerning. So it, it leads to the argument of because of these books not getting the support, they're being canceled. It's what happened with Black Panther and the crew last year. No, two, three, three, three years ago. Three, three. Is it three? Anyway, um, like when that was canceled, it literally issue one hit the the shelf, and it was already canceled because pre orders were not what they were they were supposed to be. And then within, and I, what were you gonna say, Marcus? Yeah, I guess it was two. Was it two? Yeah, it was two. Marcus, were you gonna say something? Well, I was gonna say also when it comes to you know the comic book industry, it's the business. And at the end of the day, biz, big businesses are, are actually very conservative, so they're not going to want to lose money on what the, what the, who they do value. Unfortunately, they tra they traditionally value, you know, what what white consumers will buy instead of what consumers of color will buy. So that's why you know a lot of books from 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 that feature characters of color, you know, they're not really going to be given a second or third chance if their sales slump. Exactly. Whereas if it's another character. They might get that extra boost, you know, or that extra, that extra uh, advertising to see if that character can catch on. And for me, I think like, because that that's very true, Marcus. Uh, and also, like, I feel like it's like I was talking about earlier. It's not enough to just have a black character. Like, I, I want it to actually be really good. And you know, sometimes. You know, we want we want it to be really good, and like this is kind of the struggle sometimes that I have when I'm reviewing the black books that I review. I'm not gonna say any names, <laughs> uh, but uh, but it, it, my struggle is like, okay, am I am I being overcritical or I am I under criticizing it because I want my black characters to survive? Um, and I I don't know, I don't know. It's, it's it is a struggle. Um, that like sometimes you know even even with really great writers like you'll have a, a black character um, and it just won't be that great um, and but also the 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 double part is like what Marcus brought up about the second chance and also um, you know whether or not like they're getting that push like if if a book like uh, Black Panther and the Crew got pushed like. House of X gets pushed. Like mm. I feel like mm. there might be some differences. Um, like House of X is like there was like a uh, there was like a part. Like I saw a flyer for a, a launch party. Uh, I saw yeah, they're, like there they're there are videos where party. they're pumping they're they're pumping up like you know hey look at what the critics like from the emails that we get like here's what the critics are saying about House of X right now. Even though House of X is is blowing my mind right now and it's it's probably the best thing that i'm reading right now but still like where's the support and where's the the push for when things are good absolute carnage got the same treatment yep absolute car like and you notice that for like bigger events you have things like the batman wedding of last year where they have literal parties and actual weddings oh, yeah even though the, the book didn't have a wedding it was so but big I'm, <laughs> that was for you, it Travis. People up. <laughs> and I feel like the Batman wedding woke people up. Like, oh shit! Wait a minute. Uh, uh, Batman, Catwoman, they're married. What? 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 What's happening? And then and that's, no, that's kind of a really good example. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that that's kind of a really good example of what was just said. Because like, as like a black comic, it has to be not only good but supported. Whereas you can get this wedding scenario where it was hyped up, people actually got married, married. at they comic had book wedding stores. Cakes. Yes. Like, there's, yeah. videos of, there, there's videos of <laughs> brothers in Batman cowls and tuxedos. Like, people were on board for this. 
<laughs> Yo, and and I I swear to you, if if something were to happen like that with like a, a character of color, and Bleeding Cool were to leak the, the the same way they did for the wedding, that character his comic would probably be canceled the day before. Mm. And it feels like because like for Bat- Batman for an example, he's one of these big three that DC has, and there isn't really one of those that's a black character. Nope. The, nope. The, 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 but, and here's the thing, and I, I will be making a pitch for it in two weeks. Cyborg was supposed to be that, and, and DC ignored Jeff Johns. Like, you can tell. Jeff Johns wanted mm. Cyborg to be the leading man of the DC universe, and they said no. I believe that. Yeah, it's very obvious. But then you look at the landscape, like, and I if you look at if you look at the thumbnail for the episode, you have four characters that are literally being denied um, solo titles right now. You have Vixen, who ironically enough ha- has had a mini series, uh, like on on an on a CW app recently, and like no really? one, and like no one cared because. It just was on yeah. the CW seed. It wasn't like an actually on TV thing. They kind of just pushed it to the corner, and it wasn't even like a mini series. It was like two episodes that was being cut into like ten minute segments, and it's like okay, whatever. And it like even had like voiceover cameos from Stephen Amell and Grant Gustin, and no one cared, and it sucked because no one promoted it. And I was it, about to say I saw no promotions for that. I would have watched that. Yeah, it was like a little animated series. It was really cool, and like they even brought the the woman who like the woman who voiced Vixen in the, the special in to play her in the crossovers. So it was really cool to see that, and like they did nothing with it. Like Vixen should be one of the leading ladies of the DC universe, and she's not. Like, um, what was it? Steve Orlando tried to make her a big deal in Just League of America. I think it was two years ago, two years ago, like when Justice League, Re- when DC Rebirth was starting, and it died on the vine, and it's depressing. It, it sucks to see these characters just be kicked to the wayside because sales aren't what they should be. And that's yeah. my problem when, when people say, "Oh, just instead of like making these these pit characters of color legacy characters, just create new characters." If it was that easy, it would be done all the time. Because what happens when there's a new character of color created? Nobody cares and nobody supports them and it gets canceled. And like, like for example, I'm reviewing Miles Morales Spider Man, and honestly, the first couple issues were pretty shaky. Um, he has a there's a talented writer and artist on the book, but it just wasn't really grabbing me. The book is now just finally starting to hit its stride. But if it was just some random new character named Black Spider or something, it would have got he would have got canceled. Tell me why recently I was a. Uh... I was on Hulu and I I have no idea why I clicked on this, but I watched the Justice League Attack of the Legion of Doom, like the Lego movie, like a little. <laughs> it, I think it was like a straight to DVD <laughs> type of thing. Um, and it was it was pretty funny. It was it was pretty cool. Uh, and um, you know, uh, but like it was like kind of about Cyborg and like mm-hmm. Cyborg saves the day at the end and. Well, Cyborg and Martian Manhunter, who is arguably black as well. He, he gets the um, honorary Mario. black pass from a lot of people. <laughs> yeah. uh, and, so, and so the two black people save the day, and they're, like, barely on this cover. Like, I'm looking at the cover right now. They're barely on it. Like, there's like Superman is huge. Batman is huge. Lex Luthor is huge. And they're kind of, like, in the background. And I'm like, they, they freaking save the day. Like, what, what the hell is this? Like, Look at I'm the Justice League movie. I know people don't really upset. like it. I actually, I actually happen to like that movie. Same. And I that's didn't a hate it. That's a, yeah, that's a, I that's like a things about it. <laughs> I don't really... <laughs> it's not the, as bad I, as people make it out to be. It really yeah, isn't. One I booyah. Massive, I take massive amounts of ridicule for, that, for liking that mute for movie. But... Cyborg is yeah. that movie too. He pretty much saved the day in that movie. He did. Mm-hmm. Like yeah, Superman true. came and backed him up at the end, but like he was the primary thing of that. True. Right, right, right. Yeah, and it just, just, it just, it just frustrated me. <laughs> and now you got Ray Fisher your... like doing Twitch streams now because like he has no career and it's depressing. I want right, him right. to do more, he, and I, I feel so bad he, for him. He briefly popped up in True Detective, and he was good in that. But really? it's like I think, yeah, just the third season, which is amazing. I need to watch that. Amazing, show. amazing. Oh, but, yeah, he was briefly in that. 
but to kind of back up the point of everybody's making, like, and to kind of like cheap plug one of my articles that I wrote about uh, for Forgotten Legacy is just like all these characters that for maybe two, three years ago were briefly given moments to shine and kind of take on mantles and be have a bigger spotlight. It seemed like there was such a massive backlash to that with Falcon being Captain America and Miss mm. Marvel and Riri Williams and Miles Morales, Jane Foster Thor. And you said the new Falcon. I know you talked about him um, the second preview episode. Joaquin. All these <laughs> All these characters were starting to kind of take on the spotlight and the the the, the OG characters were taking a step back. And people lost their freaking minds. Like, they, they were slowly getting the rumblings, and, like, Riri was the straw to break the camel's back. And it, and it just... And, oh. and honestly, I can't say I've read all these stories, but from what I've heard, all the the majority of these stories were quality stories. So it wasn't like they were poorly written. It well, was really just... Mary's in the comment <laughs> comments talking to us. And like, apparently Vixen had a solo series written by G. Willow Wilson, the creator of Ms. Marvel, but I didn't know that. <gasps> I, I didn't even. I didn't know that either. Apparently, Ray Fisher is also a stage actor, so that's another yeah, thing he does. He was discovered. He was that, I think Cyborg is his first major role, movie role. I did not know that. But no, go back. I'm yeah. sorry, Marcus. I didn't, I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, no, you're good. You're good. I was just saying, Just it just seems like, like all these stories were, were well thought out, well planned, and well written, but people just had a fit and that's why they, we see kind of such we're seeing them taking such a step back now i think slowly they're starting to come back with miles getting his own book um and things like that uh ms marvel still at the forefront i think they're the only two that really survived that yep, backlash pretty much because like mm-hmm. and the, 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 the thing is riri was de- like I, I, I think we talked about this on panel to panel a while back i forget what episode um riri was definitely the one that broke like the straw to break the camel's back because not only was riri rushed out the gate because her solicitation hit shelves as the black woman taking over for tony stark before civil war 2 had ended and everyone's like wait what the hell is going on you have her being rushed out tony stark kicked into a coma by by captain marvel which is really messed up. You have like barely any. He probably interaction. deserved it. What'd you say? I said he probably deserved it. Mm. <laughs> Civil War was really the worst. Yeah, Civil War Two was very bad. Um, <laughs> and like you have um, Riri and Tony who have never interacted with one another at all. And then you go into Riri's first issue where it goes, Hi, I'm really smart and I created my own Iron Man suit. But here's my origin where I was very smart at a young age. Uh, My dad was killed in a shooting. My stepdad was killed in a shooting. And my best friend was killed in a shooting. And it's like, Bendis, what TV are you watching? Because you need to stop. Real nervous. (laughs) He was watching Boys in the Hood. Oh, God. (laughs) Right. (laughs) They got (laughs) Riki. Oh, God. Like, this is how uh, black people live? Like, <laughs> and like you, sympath- you sympathize for Bendis because he created Miles and he created Riri because he wanted to inspire his young adopted daughters who are African American. Which, Bendis, I, I, I feel that. for you, my brother. I, I do. I really do. Like, I, I want to just rub your bald head and tell you I feel for you. But like, <laughs> but like you are you you are you are stepping out the boundary of what you should have been doing to the point that when the minute you left Marvel, they brought in a black woman to take over your character and do right by her. That should tell you something. Yeah. <laughs> and like, the, like now, granted, I think you learned your lesson because you came in and went, okay, let me get an actual black person to help me write Naomi that way I don't fuck up this time. Which, good on you, because Naomi is one of the best books at DC, but it shouldn't be the only black solo book at DC. Right, right, right. Right. 100%. Like I, I think a huge problem with DC is that every time they've tried to uplift a black character, there is that one thing that's fundamentally wrong with them. And I... <laughs> Like, for example, like Duke Thomas, I, I like him a lot, but we remember that the like the whole yellow cape with Robin was to draw gunfire. So that's real nervous for me. Yeah, the last episode, y'all had me dying. <laughs> yeah, y'all wrote so bad. Power Man to Oblivion. I don't even want to read him anymore. Like, <laughs> I just like I feel so bad for I feel so bad for him. Like, the, uh, mm. Like the new new power. I, I, what is see? I, I just 
I can't even find the words because he, he his his existence bog, boggles me because you still have Luke Cage as a prominent character, but it's like, hey, he's not actually using the name Power Man. Let's create a new Power Man, and I'm like, but why? That's literally it's my, all it's mind was. bottling. <laughs> it was a bad idea spinning out of a bad event because let's not forget how crappy Shadowland was. Hey, Shadowland <laughs> deserves all the power and respect. Okay, wait, it was Shadowland. Never mind. Like. <laughs> Like, like, shadow. Like, if you need, if you need any explanation of like why Shadowland was bad, picture Ghost Rider riding up the side of a ninja temple, grabbing Foggy Wilson, uh, Foggy Nelson, who's trying to climb the the, the side of the temple, grabbing him and th- and then re- and dragging him up the building and throwing him in into a window as he rides up to go fight the boss. Like that is the ultimate explanation as why Shadowland is bad. <laughs> It was so bad that Mark Way had to reboot Daredevil and have Daredevil going around <laughs> openly lying about being Daredevil, yep. about not being Daredevil. And then Charles Soule came <laughs> and he went, "Okay, wait, like, I'm, I, like Daredevil can be really awesome again. I'll have I'll have a bad guy that literally paints pictures with blood from dead bodies. Like I I'll make this cool again. Like <laughs> like Daredevil had to, had to be salvaged on like a really big level. It was so bad that Mark Way essentially characterized. Matt as just being in denial. Like, none of that ever happened. <laughs> <laughs> I still want a I'm Not Daredevil's t shirt, by the way. I need to buy one. I need to get one. <laughs> I really do. Um, so, like, and it, then, then there's, like, so we talked about Vixen. There is the issue of Blue Marvel. So, show of hands, who, who knows who Blue Marvel is? Hands on a podcast. I do. Yeah, I'm and, uh, raising my hand. <laughs> yeah, I I have my hand up, but then I like I put it down. So, so, <laughs> wait, wait a minute, this, this isn't that. So so Adam Adam Brashear was retconned to be the true first African American superhero in Marvel Comics, like actually African American, not just African, and like he is essentially the black version of Superman. Like he's super smart. He has like he's super powerful. He has quantum powers. He's like Reed Richards, but like black. He's amazing. <laughs> he he lost his wife to a tragic accident. So he's just like this super OP dude that was just created and then no one at Marvel knew what to do with him. And he's this ultimate tool. Like everyone kept saying, Oh, Michael B. Jordan is gonna DC and be the new Superman and I'm like let him stay at Marvel and be Blue Marvel. Like, he's right there. <laughs> like, there was this amazing book um, a couple years ago called, called Ultimates. Hashtag bring back Ultimates. Where it was <laughs> Black Panther, Captain Marvel, Blue Marvel, Monica Rambeau, and America Chavez trying to stop intergalactic threats. And it's this amazing book that was cut short. And I will always defend it because it had the most diverse lineup, but it got hated on for having the most diverse lineup. You had three black people, the most like super powerful Spanish woman in the Marvel universe, and Carol it. Danvers, all on one team. <laughs> uh, it wow, was it was literally awesome a team lineup. of OP people because you had Monica Rambeau at full power, who's the embodiment of light. You have Black Superman and Black Panther and Carol in, in America. And it's just like, oh, Like, it's so good. I think just you just redefined enjoy. OPP with that. <laughs> like, like literally, <laughs> like, I, I, I would give anything for Al Ewing to be allowed to, like, put them back together for, for another book. Like, it was so good. I, I could see Wesley Snipes coming into the MCU and being the Blue Marvel. That would be pretty dope. Mm. Oh, mm. See, yeah. Mm. <laughs> see, I wanted it. You got what you got against Wesley? I mean, like, there's the whole like he was being rude to people in like when Blade Trinity was going down and whatnot. Like, hence the reason why, like, some some rumor I mean, that Feige didn't bring him back to, for for the new Blade because of it. I mean, Blade Trinity. It's I think it ruined, yeah, that it ruined a lot of rude. things for a lot of people, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Mary's in the chat like, justice for ultimates, like, yes. Yes. Like, it literally... Maybe I'm the, the elephant in the room here, but I think maybe the Allstate guy should be Blue Marvel. 
Oh, uh, oh no. Yeah. Oh, honesty, I like that. Why'd you do him like that? <laughs> because I'm the only one knows him as. Like, it sucks, he but was, like, he yeah. He's the president, Travis. See, he was, uh, okay. To, to all my 24 fans it's, out there. Oh my I've, I've never seen his name before in my life. His name is Dennis Dexter Haysbert. That's a hell of a name. <laughs> what a name. What a name, my dude. Like, and like, he, was, on, he was on Brooklyn 99 as Are you, are you in good hands? Yeah. We, hey, if you were Blue Marble, you you'd be in good hands because, like, oh my God. But, I like, mean, see, I want, I, right. I, before Idris became race changed Heimdall, I wanted him to play Blue Marble. Hmm. That was my hey, opinion. He was, pretty much, he was pretty much Superman in Hobbs and Shaw. I could see that too. Uh, I want to <laughs> see that. Is that good? It's. It's it's very stupid but very fun. That's <laughs> what I'm going for. <laughs> uh, see, like I, I I'm too afraid to see that movie. I don't want to support. I don't I don't I don't want to support Dwayne the Rock Johnson in, in his stupidity. I don't want to do hey, it. Hey hey hey. No, no, no disrespect to the great one. Like, what, what is what is the, 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 the great the great one who thinks he's so important that he needs to derail the Shazam franchise to get his own movie about a character who doesn't have enough source material for his own movie. Right. Hey, he he's, he's it's, ba- it's right basically going to be Scorpion King. But Pretty much, lightning. yes, it's going to be Scorpion King. <laughs> Tell me that wouldn't be fucking awesome. Come on, <laughs> <laughs> the only that. I mean, I'm, I'm gonna watch it. I'm gonna watch it. No, know? because yeah. not you only got kids, Orion's killing people by accident. You got like Daddy Rock Black Adam. Like, oh hey, God. no, you gotta quit that. I'm done. <laughs> like, because like, not only have we seen Scorpion King, we've seen Brendan Fraser in the Scorpion King. We've seen two, two sci-fi spin-off movies about the. Scorpion Scorpion King, where Ron Perlman is supposed to be in Egypt, where it makes no sense, <laughs> and it's just there's like, like don't watch them. There's like six of those. I thought there was only three. No, there's like a lot. There's more. more? Okay, that's even worse. Like, like, like yeah, there's, we, we like don't Batista's need that. One of them. Oh wow. Like, I, like I was okay with The Rock being Black Adam for years, but then he goes, "I'm the highest paid actor in America. I'll just be, I like, have my own movie," and I'm like, brother. The only depth to Black Adam is in 52, and even then, you don't have enough for a solo movie, so stop it. <laughs> His depth is anger and just like, hey, you betrayed everything you love? Come hang out in Kondak. We'll, pr- we'll protect you. <laughs> Pretty I'm, much. O- I'm okay. I'm okay with a solo movie, but I hope he gets a more established director. The dude he's iron is just somebody he makes movies with, so I'm not sure how and that'll I s- work. I swear to God, if you make... Um, freaking Osiris, Kevin Hart. I will never watch a DC movie ever. <laughs> I swear to God. I swear to God. Oh, it's Stan. It's Stan. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. It's Superman. We're gonna die. Like, hey, you gotta say the word. The word is Shazam, but I didn't want to say Shazam. But I was like, uh, Shazam. And then I was like, I'm big, but I'm small, but I'm big. So Shazam. <laughs> Can you, like, can you imagine how? And then, and then oh, no. they would get freaking what's her face? Who's the who's the one woman that's like in every like who's like the black equivalent to Kevin Hart now? I can't remember her damn name. Tiffany Haddish. If they get Tiffany Haddish <laughs> to be ISIS, I quit. Like no, dirty, like, dirty. Now, now granted, she's, like, she's in a Vertigo hey, movie. Yeah. This tomorrow, right, like that comes in theaters to... tomorrow. The kitchen, the kitchen. She's the in kitchen. the kitchen. So like, yay for her. But don't you don't you dare come to Condoc, woman. You stay where you belong. <laughs> like you doing I'm good. good like movie. I love you and Tracy Morgan's new show. Stay like I like, I love you, but no. <laughs> oh my I, god. I'm not. I just I read a pretty poor review of the kitchen. See, I want the kitchen oh. to be so good because I want them to see that Vertigo can survive. <laughs> but you're right about the last OG. That show is awesome. The last OG is so good. It's, like I started watching that recently on Netflix, and it's so good. Hilarious. I was like, Tracy Morgan, what are you going to do after your car accident? And then he comes back with this, and I'm like, okay, I see um, you. Booyah. <laughs> um, <laughs> what? Um, <laughs> One booyah yeah, it was for the whole movie. It was appropriate. Okay, but no, like, everybody, okay, let's clear up a misconception about Cyborg before we get to the two weeks from now. Everyone only thinks he says booyah because of the Teen Titans TV show. 
and it frustrates Find me. It. Which, which, granted, they gave you your fan service and justice. They gave you one, and I wanted it to be just that one. And it was the good one too. It was that solid, like real quick, booyah. But now we got a Doom <laughs> Patrol. Every motherfucker wants him to, wants him to say booyah, and I'm like, shut up. Shut up. <laughs> like, just let him be a character. Stop wanting him to say booyah. Cyborg, can I get a selfie? Say booyah. I'm like, shh. <laughs> Imagine how he feels. Ugh, I, I don't know. It, 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 like, I, I feel bad for him. Um, Shout, shout out to my man Todd. And, 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 and like, it was girl Noel for hanging out with us. That, that, that they have to go to bed. But, um... Like, 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 thank you for everyone who has been supporting us, by the way. This has been amazing. Um, so, I want to, like, as, as we begin to wrap up this first episode, there, uh, there goes into, like, the, the, the final point uh, that's going to lead into our next topic for next week, which is, the uh, like, we, we know capitalism affects comics. That That's sort of a two-handed thing of... People like, like like people don't have the money. Impoverished African Americans struggle to have the money to afford these comic books, so they're getting left by the wayside. But then there's the other conversation that that we'll be talking more in depth with next week, which is the intimidation from African Americans that are casual fans to enjoy nerd culture. Oof. Well, like, for what fun. I. From what I see, like I have a, a lot of cousins that are like really big into the MCU, but that that's really where it starts and stops with them. Mm-hmm. They're not really gonna buy the comics. They might buy one here and there, like a graphic novel, or they might buy like the Encyclopedia of Marvel. But that's where it really stops for them. They're not gonna they're not gonna give the they think anything that's not the MCU is not good. Yeah. So yeah, and I, and I think they're like they, it's not that they they feel pressure to enjoy it. They just don't care. They just want to see the movies. They want to see what the next phase is gonna have, and that's that. So I think Marvel needs to do a better job of trying to connect their casual audience to say, hey, we got books too that are just as good, if not better. Well, there have been some efforts because you see at some of the bigger like theaters, they'll sell single issues outside of the showings but that's not at every theater they're not equipping right. the people to buy these books like now granted props to, to black folks who actually made um ta-nehisi coast's first volume of black panther like sell out on amazon multiple times when the black panther movie was coming out because like if you look at diamond sales charts that volume one kept having multiple like rises in sales because of people wanting to know more about black panther so like props, but we need to see more of that. We need to see more like enjoyment of the product. That way, they can keep surviving, and they can see that that people want to like see themselves in these books. I mean, like Jasmine, I don't, I don't know how much how, like how much you want to go into depth of this, but like for you, isn't it really important? It's of course it's important. I think a, there's a big, big gap between movies and comics and. People trying to bridge that gap is increasingly important, but it's it's a big leap. There's a there's a lot that goes into that, and not a lot of people are putting forth the effort. And yeah, I mean this is this is a topic for next time because I have a lot of opinions. But um, as someone who came from film uh, into comics and didn't start with comics, that is pretty much my entire stance. Yeah. All right. So that'll be something we dive into more of like next week. I think this first episode has been good. I I, I hate that because of the history section I talked a lot. Hopefully hopefully that isn't a thing next episode. But like, it's good that you're passionate about it. I think that's that really shows your um your knowledge and your stance on it. It shows that you know what you're talking we, about too. We had a, we had a history to go through, so you know Yeah. Um, it's important. History is always important and you gotta lay the foundation yes. for the next most deaf. I just don't want to seem like I'm like lording over y'all. Like, the, like I want this to be like <laughs> our thing where we can enjoy this shit and like grow the culture and shit. Like, I'm I'm really happy about this. Like Good I've times. been looking forward to this all day and like I'm just mm-hmm. like like this sounds stupid, but I wore my like super old classic Black Panther shirt. That way, like <laughs> it's it's like like he started the, like the movement. 
I wanted to start this this with like on the right foot. Like th- it, this meant a lot to me, so I'm, I'm really glad it's panned out the way we wanted it to. Yeah, I had fun with it, definitely. Travis is probably still playing DC Universe on his Switch. <laughs> no, actually, I put that down a little while ago because uh, I've, I've been having a pretty decent time. I, I I tried to stay a little silent just because I want the like the new people's voices to be out a little more. But and plus, you and I, you, you know, and I get to talk on Saturday, <laughs> right? That's what I'm saying. Like we we already kind of infect the airwaves a lot, and I want to hear other people's opinions, and I'll, I'll definitely chime in later on a lot more for sure. All right, all right. Well, we will be back here same time next week. For anybody who did, 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 couldn't catch the whole show, we will be archiving this on YouTube. So if you missed part of it, you came in late, don't, don't worry. It will be up tomorrow morning on the on YouTube.com slash on Comics Ground. So you'll be able to catch that there. Um, thank you so much for tuning in. This has been an amazing show. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter, on Instagram, and here on Twitch. Um, on Twitch, it's uh, twitch.tv slash on comics ground for, uh, for our podcast, Twitter and Instagram, it's at blurred grounds and follow the website, Twitter and Instagram at on comics ground every weekday. We are publishing amazing, um, reviews and opinion pieces and previews of the latest comic books and our opinions about those comic books and nerd culture. Cause we care about the, what's going on in like different as, aspects besides just comics. So please take a look at that. Uh, lately we've been pumping out a lot of good stuff like Marcus mentioned his piece on Legacy Heroes was just great I loved it because like as someone who wanted Sam Wilson to succeed and then he didn't it really pisses me off so seeing him defend my boy was great so like I appreciate you oh man thank you I had fun writing it I'm mad at you for not telling me you was going to Disney I'd have have went with you (laughs) (laughs) next time next time yes All right, we will catch you folks next time. Thank you so much for tuning in. Peace out.